Hi everyone, welcome to part two of the July overview. We are going to get stuck into Libra Moon. So Libra Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. We're going to take a look at your fast moving planets. We're going to look at Sun, Mercury, Venus, and then we're going to take a look at some of the slower moving ones. We're going to look at Jupiter. We're going to look at Saturn. And as for Mars, Rahu and Ketu, we're covering that in the bigger overview. So take a look at that uh, if you'd like to see what's happening with your Mars, for example. And Mars is very important, very important to watch the big overview this time in particular. Okay, so your sun is moving on July 16th to 17th, shifting from your 9th house to your 10th house. What does this look like? Uh, this is looking like a bit of a mixed bag. So for the first half of the month, you're going to want to be careful at work. You're going to want to be careful with people around you. Um, if there are any false accusations, and of course you may not have done anything, but just beware that that kind of thing could happen. And just um, now that you are aware, you'll handle that really well. So um, that should go okay. The later half of the month, the sun is very happy in the 10th house. So this is going to be a good time. You're going to start to see growth to your income. You're going to see possibly growth to your income with little effort. It could be really good, this particular transit. There could be new opportunities, um, could be opportunities to step up a bit, be recognized a bit more broadly, and good time with your family as well. So this is great. The sun is providing beautiful energy for you. Mercury is going to stay in your 10th house. Uh, last time he went across three houses and he traveled really fast. This time because of a retrograde, he's kind of going up and then he's coming back in to the 10th house. So he's going to stay in the 10th house, which is really quite interesting. Uh, this is going to have you inclined more towards spirituality. Um, it is a good time for your income and career growth as well. Uh, relationship with your spouse should be good. Um, good time for your social scene also and uh, some mental peace there as well. So your Mercury is looking really lovely too, which is nice. Let's take a look at Venus on July 4th, shifting from your 10th house to the 11th house. So this is also looking good. This is looking really good. I'm liking this. I'm liking this a lot. If before the fourth you were experiencing some mental stress or worries, this could be why. And you don't have to worry about that because that's going to shift and that's going to change. So both the sun, I mean sun 16th and 17th is going to get better. Venus after the fourth is going to get better. So that's great. Um, expansion to wealth, expansion to you know your reputation and all that kind of thing uh good for your social life singles get out and mingle you know this is this is all looking good if there's an energy that's compromised in your chart what i'm going to do is i'm going to leave a link well various links in the description below for all the different planets i've created a meditation for you guys so that if i say during one of these monthly things that you've got an energy that's compromised you can use your own free will to boost that energy within you okay so those meditations are really great for that they help recondition your subconscious mind and they really reflect the energy of that planet at its most healthy so it's the kind of thing you can put on before you sleep or you know have it on the background while you're doing something else whatever uh, let's have a look at Jupiter Jupiter on July the 11th, Jupiter is retrograde and Jupiter is in your first house. On July the 11th, Jupiter is going to go forward. Sorry, did I say that the wrong way around? Let me start that again. Jupiter is retrograde and on July the 11th, Jupiter is going to move forward and he is in your first house. I think I got that right this time. Um, if you've been experiencing any issues, it could be to do with Jupiter. There could be some mental tension, some stresses, some strains, some that background sort of stresses, um, a drain to your energy. Uh, and this could be subconscious stuff as well. You know, it doesn't have to be so in your face. Uh, there could be arguments. It might not be um, easy to get along with people at this time. It's a terrific time to expand spiritually. And usually when things aren't going great in our outer world, we really need to, it's asking us to come inside and it's asking us to just keep the outside world where it is and you come in and you come inwards and you reflect and you 
read lots of books and you watch lots of good YouTube, which I'm sure you're doing, and, um, you know, it's a good time. Good time for solitude, possibly, as well. Uh, I don't see why not. Let's take a look at your Saturn. Um, Saturn, and we're just going to check in briefly. We won't spend too much time with Saturn. Saturn is in your third house. Oh, well, hallelujah. This is a, oh, we, we caught up with Saturn a couple of months ago, and I'm sure I would have talked about this then. This is great. You know, lucky you. No more Sadi Sati. Oh, hallelujah. And you must have, after that, you must have gained a new level of maturity. You must have you know, um, learned so many lessons over the past seven years. I mean, at least, you know, depending on how your transits operate and run. I mean, it's um, six to seven years, isn't it? And some people have seen it even longer because of the setup of their chart. Um, this is great. This is, you know, a time, thanks to Saturn. I mean, you might be having troubles with Jupiter, don't worry if your Saturn is good you can build you can grow and you can build and you can grow if you put your own effort in Saturn is the kind of planet that if you work with him he will reward you so don't worry too much uh, if any other planets aren't yielding for you right now work with Saturn get to know Saturn do all the Saturnian things you know which is a little bit of effort every single day he's a compound interest kind of guy you have to keep at things you've got to keep chipping away and you will definitely come out on top. So your confidence should be coming back. Um, you should be able to pick up jobs more easily. Uh, property should be good. This could be a time even when you buy property. Okay, Saturn's going to be here for quite a while, and this is fantastic. So you're one of the lucky people. Saturn is happy in three places in the zodiac, right? So you're one of the lucky three signs that's getting a good couple of years at least of this beautiful transit. So good on you, Libra Moon, and uh, I wish you I wish you well. We are now going to meet Scorpio Moon. Scorpio Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Now we're going to take a look at your fast-moving planets and then we're going to have a look at a couple of your slower-moving planets. As for Mars, Ketu Rahu, those are going to be covered in the big overview. So if you'd like to see what's going on with those, have a look at that video there. Uh, but for your mini reading, this is what we're going to take a look at. Sun, July 16th to 17th is moving from your 8th house to the 9th house. So if you're having a bit of a tough time in life right now, this could well be why. Um, could be experiencing some hurdles uh, at the moment, you know, work obstacles, um, legal things coming up out of nowhere. There could be a drain on your health, a drain on your energy. Your, your energy might dip. Um, this is a time you want to be careful at work and uh, you want to be, be braced or, 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 you know, figure out how to handle false accusations uh, of some kind, potentially. Um, I mean, it doesn't have to be, it could just be a health drain. Do you know what I mean? You might just be a little bit tired, more tired than usual. Uh, but, but there are various things that could happen with this sun. And it's not, sun's not particularly happy to be in the 8th or the ninth house. So, so that's just a thing to bear in mind there. Mercury stays in your ninth house um, because it retrogrades. Last time Mercury covered quite a lot of ground, covered about three houses I think. Now because of the retrograde he's sticking around in the ninth house there and again uh, it's a little bit of a tricky placement. Mercury is not hugely thrilled to be here. Could be arguments with your father, could be financial losses, you might have to work harder to maintain your position. Um, this really could be a time when you need to cut down on your expenses and that kind of thing. So anytime I say that, say for example, the planetary energy is compromised in your chart, one of the things you can do is click on the description below and I'm going to put um, links to my meditations and my meditations are designed for your free will to adopt the affirmations, you know, the, the style of those meditations are very much affirmations led. And those affirmations are designed to recondition your consciousness to bring out that healthy mercurial energy or that healthy sun energy. So if one of these planets is a bit compromised in your transits, you can use your free will 
to bring that energy out if you know what I mean so that's what those meditations are there for you can listen to them as you sleep you can listen to them on your way to work whatever it is um, let's have a look at Venus hopefully I'm looking for good news for you here uh, Scorpio moon because it's not looking fantastic no Venus is not looking fantastic either um, gosh what is looking good okay no Scorpio moon you are going through a tough time uh, if you are a Scorpio moon and you're going through a really amazing time, then please write me a comment. I would like to know. I'd like to know what you've got going on that's uh, good. I mean, well, it could be your other planets. You see, this is the thing. Vedic astrology is so large and so complex, and there's so many things that we can look at. There are divisional charts. There's, I mean, it's just epic. So, sure, things could be going good for you. But, um, look, I'm having a look at your Venus now on July the 4th. Venus is shifting from the ninth house to the 10th house. Uh, Venus has had a bit of a good time in the ninth house, but now moving into the 10th, she's not particularly comfortable there. Um, we're looking at some mental stress, some worries, perhaps some issues with your finances, issues to do with your spouse, that kind of thing. Um, having a look at Jupiter, who is retrograde right now, but will go forward on July the 11th, and Jupiter is in your 12th house. So again, Jupiter is not particularly thrilled to be here, um, which seems a bit of an anomaly because it is the 12th house. But hey, I mean, look, it's, it's not looking good. Uh, expenses could be high. Good time to get far away, though. Good time for solitude. Great time to expand spiritually. Terrific time. And look, this is the thing. When the outer world is proving to be difficult, it's asking us to go within. It's asking us to, to leave the outer world alone and to find the treasures and the gems within. And they are there, I promise you. If there's anyone who knows solitude and who knows what it is to be on your own and find your own inner resources, it's definitely me. I've had to do a lot of that in my life. And um, my goodness, you'll never be alone really, if, if you know how to be within, you, you know, um, this can be a terrific time for you. So even though you might have seen my face with a little bit concerned when I was looking at this whole thing, I'm going, oh my God, where's the good news? Um, yeah, I, hang in there. There is some very good news coming for you. And I'm looking at you, Saturn, now. We're going to do a little check-in with Saturn. We saw him a couple of months ago. Saturn is in your second house. This is your last phase of Sade Sati. Okay, so you are going through a tough time. There's no doubt about it. Um, and the the faster moving, softer planets, I mean, they're, they're not yielding very much, uh, particularly right now, but don't worry, that will change coming up in, you know, a matter of weeks, basically. So you'll have some good news to look forward to in a matter of weeks. The other thing is that you are going to come out of Sade Sati and you're in your Sade Sati. Sure, your mind may be wandering, maybe it's hard to find peace in a piece um, you have to work harder at your career it's it's a bit of a long hard slog for many of you and um, gosh what can I say I mean Saturn is polishing you from from a rough stone not that you ever were rough my god you, you've never been rough you've always been a gem but Saturn is polishing you to shine even brighter believe me hang in there when you come out of this time you are going to dazzle okay I really really mean that so hang in there and write me a comment if you if you would like to if there's anything you want to run past me uh, so that was for you Scorpio moon and I wish you well I wish you lots of love and we are going to have a look at Sagittarius moon so Sagittarius moon welcome Welcome to your mini reading. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, we're going to take a look at your faster moving planets. I'm sure that in the past one I, I mixed up the two, so I apologize. Not that you would have seen the other ones, but anyway. I'm going to look at your faster moving planets, and then we look at your slower moving planets, which is Jupiter and Saturn this time, because we're going to cover Mars, Rahu, and Ketu in the big overview which I do recommend that you watch this time because it should be quite exciting this has been an exciting little time in history there's a lot going on and um and it's exciting you know so I'm going to be recording that one tomorrow I'm actually recording this one first this time 
Uh, okay, so what's happening for you? Sun, July 16th to 17th is shifting from the 7th house to the 8th house. What have we got going on here? Looks like, yeah, sun's not looking fantastic, okay? So, um, but don't worry because you've probably got some good news elsewhere and you most certainly do, which I'm very happy about. Uh, but sun might be posing problems for you. So you might be coming up against some hurdles with work, people seeing you to you, your bosses, that kind of thing, possibly. There could possibly be a health drain, energy drain, dip in energy, that kind of thing. Um, perhaps your expenses are up. Uh, you could be experiencing a bit of tough time with your spouse, your spouse's family. Um, that, that could be a little bit tough at this time. But don't worry because you've got some other good things going on. You've got some very good things going on, in fact. So let's have a look here. Well, you've got a bit of a mixed bag, actually, to be honest. So let's have a look. Mercury. By the way, if ever I say that a planet is compromised for you, as I've just said with your sun, what you can do is you can go in the description below and I've got links to my planet meditations. Now these planet meditations are designed to help recondition your subconscious mind so that you can use your free will to maximize the energy that is compromised. So if the sun's not giving you great energy, guess what? You can tune into the sun meditation. There's a whole bunch of affirmations there which will help you recondition and get into that healthy sun energy so that you can shine that out right we do have free will so it's not all written in the sky there's a lot we can do and that's something I'm very interested in as uh, a Vedic life coach so let's have a look at this Mercury stays in your eighth house due to retrograde so last time he covered something like three houses this time because of retrograde he's coming back in so he's not leaving the house he's going to stay in the eighth house this is fantastic for you. This is great. I'm really happy. Um, so you're getting extra time with Mercury in this space and you want extra time. Believe me, this is good. So a rise to your social status, uh, you know, you'll make wise decisions. Your intellect will be sharper. Progress in your career. The money should go up, hopefully. Um, you know, you can achieve mental peace quite easily with this position. You can also have um, victory over your opposition absolutely brilliant so i'm really liking that for you venus on july 4th shifts from your eighth house to the ninth house so this is looking good yeah you've had comfort from your spouse comfort from spouse's family quite possibly now you're looking forward to an increase in luck fortune gains travel right especially any kind of pilgrimage type travel or a spiritual retreat or a yoga retreat or something like that that'd be beautiful at this time your health should be good and your spirituality should be on the rise so definitely um, you should be able to absorb this information easily and, and pick up all kinds of new things and really expand spiritually it's a very beautiful energy you've got going on there uh, I'm looking at your Jupiter and I'm so pleased at this you've got Jupiter in your 11th house this is beautiful. Good on you, Sagittarius moon. This is great. Jupiter is currently in retrograde. He's going to go forward July 11th. But because of Jupiter, you're enjoying all kinds of respect and prestige and, and you know, great position in your career. Um, you know, good times with your children, supportive times with your family your family will be supportive and loving towards you uh, material comforts should be good your love life should be good if you want to meet someone singles get out and mingle <laughs> i don't know anyone who says singles get out and mingle i say it it's cheesy but hey uh your profits money yeah money should be good social scene is good this is all good now if you're hearing all of that and going hang on a minute that's not my life could be due to your Saturn. Now, if Saturn is quite strong in your chart, then you'll be having quite a time of it. You are in Sadi Sati. Uh, Saturn is first house, first house from the moon. That's on the moon. Saturn is on the moon. This is not good. Um, it's not bad, okay? The other thing is I've seen some people in Sadi Sati. Look at Donald Trump. 
He's inside his healthy right now. I think his is in the second from the moon at the moment. I can check that tomorrow. But um, yeah, your, yours is first from the moon. Yours is on the moon. And, and you know, I've met many people who are in their second side of Sati who don't even know they're in it. And um, that, that always amazes me. And they're very spiritual people. And really that's what Sati Sati can be like. It can just be like, uh, the daily grind. It can just be like, gosh, you know, this is Groundhog Day. Every day is the same. It can feel as bad as that. Do you know what I mean? And it, it, quite frankly, if that's as bad as it is, that's fine. Do you know? Um, Groundhog Day every day is not so bad a situation and you can use that to master some skill. I always tend to, I always say to people that Sade South is a really good time to master some kind of skill. So if there's something like you want to be a jazz pianist, because you can't do that in a week, you've really got to be practicing that piano every single day for a year kind of thing. So, or writing a book, you can't really write a book in a week. Writing a good book takes time, it takes many months. So this is the kind of time that you're in right now with Saturn, that you can be use that Saturn is trying to polish you Saturn is trying to polish you into a brilliant diamond that's going to dazzle use that energy and work with that energy do a little something every day that you want to master or that you want to get good at and you will be supported in that and you will come out with invaluable skills that you can really make a lot of money from potentially you know what I mean because Saturn's into money you know, well, I think he's into money. I think he's one of the most materially giving uh, of the planets. So Sagittarius Moon, it's a bit of a mixed bag for you. Uh, you've got some good things in here. You've got some things that are a bit compromised potentially, but uh, I can see that you're going to come through it. I know. And you've got some good transits coming up, especially once you come out of that Sadisati period. But use your Sadisati. Use this time. Um, I'm a big Saturn fan. I, I, you know, he, he wants us to do well. He really does. Okay, Sagittarius Moon, thank you for joining. And Capricorn Moon, welcome. Capricorn Moon, welcome to your mini reading. I'm so happy to have you. I'm so happy to see you. Now let's have a look at what's going on for you. What's going on in your world, Capricorn Moon? Uh, sun, you've got Sun. Um, July 16 to 17 is shifting from your sixth house to the seventh house. So this is looking like a little bit of a mixed bag. Sun's not thrilled to be in the sixth house. Sun is thrilled. Apologies. I'm mixing things up. I have mixed some, a little something up in every single one of these today. I don't know. It might be, is it the full moon? Yes, it is. There's a great big full moon out there. My goodness, that's why I wore this, um, <laughs> this stone in honor of the full moon. Uh, right. I'm going to start that again. Sun moves from your sixth house to seventh house. The sun is happy in the sixth house. So you should be experiencing a relief in your health and happiness, good times, improvement in your status. Earnings should go up. Great time. 16th to 17th, though, things are going to change a little bit. So you might start to experience some slight challenges in your work. Um, you might find that there's some challenging times with your spouse, possibly, uh, nothing major, just, you know, um, won't be as smooth. Okay, so it's a mixed bag there with the sun. You're going to have kind of half of the month good and half of the month not so great. Let's have a look at what's going on with Mercury. Mercury stays in the seventh house and it's going to retrograde July 26. So last time Mercury covered a lot of ground, went through three houses, uh, went from one yeah, to the second and then to the third. Sorry about that Capricorn moon, the camera just cut out as I was talking about Mercury and we're not even in the retrograde yet so I don't know why that happened. The retrograde is going to happen on July 26th, Mercury is staying in your 7th house. I'll just do a little recap, I might be doubling up, sorry about that. Um, basically, I mean this isn't a brilliant energy, uh, Mercury is not thrilled to be in the 7th house. It's not terrible but it's not, it's not great. Um, you know, you might find that seniors criticize your work a little bit more than usual. Sorry, I'm just going to move the camera there. Um, you find that your you know, seniors might pick on your work or something like that. Uh, you might find your energy dips 
there might be a bit of a health you know drain on your energy or a dip to your health or something like that um, this is really a time when you want to improve communication with your family you want to make sure that you're communicating well and sensitively okay so that's going to be important uh, this is also a time to avoid travel as well you you might not want to travel so much I mean if you have to travel for work if you have to travel for family reasons important reasons of course do that this is the kind of frivolous travel that you know oh I just want to get away uh, you know there might be better times to do that if you've got some control over that Okay, let's take a look at Venus. So Venus on July the 4th is moving from your 7th house to the 8th house. So Venus Venus isn't happy in the 7th house. We know that, yeah. Challenges with spouse, could be troubles uh, there. But Venus loves being in the 8th house. So there should be... Um, some successful outcomes in your relationship. If you're finding things are a bit tough, basically hang in there, okay? You're going to have a better time with your significant other. So let's take a look at Jupiter. Uh, Jupiter on the 10th, no, in the 10th house, sorry. I don't know where my brain is. <laughs> uh, Jupiter is in your 10th house and Jupiter is retrograde right now. It's going to go forward on July the 11th. Now, yeah, the, Jupiter is not so delighted to be in the 10th house. Jupiter is, um, when Jupiter is, pretty sure Jupiter is debilitated in the, in the 10th really. Um, in, in a natal chart, for example, or it's, well, it's Jupiter in Capricorn, yeah. Um, I mean, look, that yeah, you might experience some negativity in your thinking, uh, and it could be to do with with Jupiter, basically. Oh dear. Um, sorry, there was a bug on my laptop. It's just not working today, is it? And all these disasters are happening in your sign. What does it mean? It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, look, okay, Jupiter in the 10th, it could be some negative thinking here. Um, could be a drain on your emotions. So as I was saying with Mercury, you might have a drain on your health. You might have kind of, um, you know, energy drain. Like you might feel tired more than usual or something. Uh, we've got Jupiter here and we're kind of looking at an emotional drain as well. Uh, unfulfilled desires, that kind of thing. It's this is really the time to be avoiding conflicts or, or not engaging in conflicts or, or engaging in any of that kind of energy. And uh, property, this is also a time where you don't particularly want to be doing too much with property if you can avoid it. But if you can't, don't worry, you know. It, it just means that you're aware now and you can be more careful. You can pay more attention. Do you know what I mean? So never put your life on hold. That's what I always say. An astrologer might say, oh, such and such is in retrograde. Life moves on. You've got to keep going, you know. You've got to keep creating. You've got to keep doing. So you'll always find a way. Don't forget you've got 25% free will, okay. Uh, and I've got a video on that. If you want to watch more, you can learn more about having 25% free will. Is it really 25%? How do you know it's so specific? Well, there are theories on that and I think they've got a lot of credibility. So, well, the people who came up with those theories had a, have a lot of credibility. Uh, let's take a look at this. So great time for spirituality. Absolutely. Jupiter in the 10th, terrific time to become spiritual. You can really be You can really be, yeah. I mean, that's the end of that sentence. You can really be in a pure way, you know. When the outer world is posing all these problems, you've really got to come within. Everything's terrible out there. Come inside. You'll find all kinds of gems. You'll find worlds within worlds. When you go deep into your spirituality, it's one of the most beautiful things you can do. And sometimes you have to. Sometimes you have to engage in the outer world and you have to be doing in the outer world and doing service and helping uplift humanity and sure. But sometimes you've got the luxury of going within. And with Jupiter here, that's a really 
good way of seeing that and a really good way of putting that. So let's take a look at Saturn. What's Saturn up to? Saturn is in your first phase of Sati Sati. Oh my goodness, Capricorn Moon. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, look, this, this, this isn't... This, this could be a little bit of a tough time for you. I think you and the Scorpio moon are having a bit of a tough time. So Capricorn moon, if you are having a bit of a tough time, you know, pop me a comment or something or pop me an email or, um, you know, it, it doesn't have to be so bad. And the other thing that you can do, I don't know if I mentioned the meditations in your, have I mentioned them? Click on the link below. There's a bunch of meditations. If I've said that there's an energy that's compromised for you, click on the meditation that's designed to get your free will into a place where you're you're making up for that energy of that planet that's compromised for you so you don't have to worry there's lots of things you can do and um certainly in this uh you know sadasati time this is really a time for you to Saturn's going to, basically Saturn's going to want to polish you into a diamond, you know, he, he might think you're a bit rough and he's going to polish you and sometimes it's going to hurt. Sometimes you'll be busy or sometimes life will be really quiet. This can manifest in all kinds of ways, Sati Sati, it's absolutely fascinating. And what I would say to you is that treat it as compound interest. Do a little bit each day. Do a little bit of exercise each day. Do your 10 minutes of yoga every day. If you want to become good at something, if you want to master something, um, then now is the time to get into a routine of spending an hour each day or setting aside a little bit of time each day to do that thing that you want to do. This is a really good time to start doing that. So Capricorn Moon, I'm going to wish you well because I've got to crack on and uh, get to the next sign. But thank you so much for stopping by. I really wish you well. And you know what? This can be a really, really good time for you. This can be the time where you, where you go with it. You go, do you know what? Yes, I am being polished into a diamond that's going to dazzle and I'm going to work at that and I'm going to use my free will energy to, to go within, build the riches there where I need to and the outer world is just going to reflect that. The outer world is going to reflect the riches that you find within, that you grow within, that you build within. The outer world has to reflect that. So I wish you well, Capricorn Moon. And I'm going to welcome Aquarius Moon. Aquarius Moon, thank you so much for joining. Let's take a look at what's going on in your chart. Now it's all looking uh, quite interesting for you. It's kind of a mixed bag. Kind of a mixed bag for you this month. So let's take a look at your faster moving planets. Then we're going to look at your slower moving planets, Jupiter and Saturn this time. When it comes to Mars, Rahu and Ketu, we're going to look at them in the big overview. So don't worry, I am taking care of that. But that's so big this time with Mars going in retrograde that I wanted to deal with that exclusively in the overview. Let's take a look at your sun. July 16th to 17th is shifting from your fifth house to the sixth house. Uh, this appears to be a bit of a mixed bag so until so up until about the 16th you may experience some issues at work seniors may question you that kind of thing or people might be critical of your work that kind of thing um, don't worry too much about that because after 16th 17th you're going to have some good sunshine energy in your life so your health will feel a lot better you'll feel more energized your work's going to improve and lift your network is you know going to boost um, if you've had to deal with matters of litigation or, or anything complicated like that that is going to go well as well so that's really good let's have a look at your mercury mercury stays in your sixth house uh, do the retrograde on July the 26th. So July 26th, Mercury is in retrograde. So that makes him stay for quite a while in your sixth house. He's not leaving. So as he would if he wasn't going retrograde. Um, this is fantastic. You know, some, some of the signs are really profiting from this Mercury. Some of the signs are not. You're one of the signs that's profiting from this. So that's good. Uh, you've got success and victory to look forward to when it comes to Mercury. Your business will grow. Your knowledge will grow. Um, money is good for you right now. Comforts, fantastic. Your health is great. Beautiful. Your Mercury energy is stunning. Let's have a look at your Venus energy. Okay, if you've been having some challenges in life, 
could be due to your Venus. So July 4th, Venus is shifting from your 6th house to the 7th house. Now Venus is debilitated in the 6th house. Venus isn't happy there. Uh, and she's not particularly happy in the seventh either. So if your Venus energy is really strong and prominent in your chart, meaning, you know, Venus might be your ascendant, might be the lord of your first house, it might be conjunct a whole bunch of planets, it might be, there's all kinds of reasons. Um, and then there's divisional charts that we can look into. There's lots of things we can see there. So if Venus is a big energy in your chart, she's compromised for, for, for the month of July. Uh, but that's okay because she might not be so prominent. Maybe your Jupiter is very prominent. Your Jupiter is beautiful. I do want to say a little note on if ever in the monthlies I say that there's an energy that's compromised in your chart, what you can do is you can click on the description below and I've got um, links to my planet's meditations. And what you can do is you can listen to your planet and the meditation basically has a series of positive affirmations that kind of reprogram your subconscious mind so that if there's a planetary energy that's not going to be giving you good results, you can use your free will to basically boost that planet's energy within you. Okay, so I do believe we can use our free will to compensate for and make up for things that perhaps aren't working so well in our chart. So don't worry, there are always things that you can do. Okay, so and if you know meditations aren't your thing, think up Venus things to do. You know, think of maybe you just want to go out and appreciate beauty. Maybe you want to go to a crazy expensive store that you've never been into but you think to yourself I'm going to do some window shopping here and you don't buy anything if you don't want to you know I, I, I do that I window shop in the in the fanciest of places I can't afford to buy anything but I don't care I like to ap appreciate beauty because I feel like that's giving my Venus energy a workout you know so my inner Venus my inner goddess gets a chance to to enjoy so you know there's always ways to compensate for energies that are lacking there's a lot we can use our free will to do okay Aquarius moon so let's have a look at Jupiter what's going on with Jupiter Jupiter is really good for you oh these are great you've got Jupiter and Saturn fantastic here so Jupiter in the ninth house Jupiter is retrograde right now uh, and July 11th Jupiter is going forward this is fantastic so Jupiter you know professional growth your finances are going to grow, uh, relationship with your boss is going to be really good right now, you might get promotions, money is going up, this is great, great time to get married, lucky you, this is so beautiful, I'm so happy for you Aquarius Moon. Uh, and Saturn, we're doing a little check-in of Saturn with all the signs and um, yours is in the 11th house, wow, well you are one of the lucky three. Because at any given time, Saturn is doing really good things in three parts of the zodiac. Okay, um, you're one of the lucky three. And, and look at that. This is pre Sardisati. And I always call this time, it's a platform building time. So this is when your money goes up. You know, you're given a lot of things. You're going to be given opportunities. You're going to be given a lot of great things. This is the time to invest that money well because you're going to have about seven years of Saadi Saadi. Now Saadi Saadi is not necessarily a bad thing. Saadi Saadi can be a very good thing for people. I've seen very good things happen for people during Saadi Saadi. I've seen people get jobs, have children, get married, do all sorts of things. Do, do some of the most profound things they ever do in their lives in fact. Uh, there are some celeb charts that I've studied where you know that time has made them for life. Saadi Saadi can be incredible. So don't ever think of it as a bad time but it is a time that you need to get ready for. And you're in a position right now, Aquarius Moon, where you can get ready for this time. So you want to be kind of building a savings nest egg or you want to be, if you, if you can buy a property or something like that, terrific. Um, this is a time to invest, be sensible, be planning for the future, you know, feather in your nest so that, so that you can relax you know, and, and, and rest potentially when you need to uh, during during the Sade Sade time. Aquarius moon, I mean, this is just looking fantastic. And I'm seeing, that, I mean, like, you've got time, okay, to prepare for this Sade Sade. I'm pretty sure Saturn, 
let's have a quick look. So, I mean, it's um, 2020. It's it's a while away. You've got time. You know, he's going to move. I think it's January. Uh, yeah, it looks like January 2020. Saturn's going to move. So you've got time. you got time to feather your nest. That's how I'm going to phrase that. So lucky you. Uh, and yeah, if, if any of your faster moving planets are giving you a little bit of grief or energy drain, top up the energy by using one of my meditations or just by tuning into that. You know, if the sun's giving you some issues, which I think I probably said it did, you can do some sun salutations, yoga moves, you know. There's lots of things you can do. Okay, so Aquarius Moon, it's been lovely. Thank you so much for stopping by. And we're going to meet Pisces Moon. Pisces Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, let's take a look at what's going on for you. So we're going to have a look at your faster moving planets. We're going to look at Sun, Mercury, Venus. Then we're going to look at the slower moving ones, which is Jupiter, Saturn this time. Mars, Rahu, Ketu, I'm saving that for the big overview. So if you want to check those out, take a look at the big overview. That's going to be quite exciting this time. So what's happening with your sun? Uh, July 16th to 17th, your sun is shifting from the fourth house to the fifth house. And yeah, this could be, sun's not, sun's not thrilled to be in the fourth or the fifth house, unfortunately. Um, you might be experiencing some, some stress, a little bit of stress, a little bit of worry. Perhaps there have been some miscommunications at work. Uh, you... Yeah, I mean, I mean you, issues in your work life, they, they may crop up, you know. Uh, your health could be compromised. You might have a drain in your energy or energy dip or something like that. You just might be a little bit tired than normal. And that could be due to the sun. Let's take a look at Mercury. Mercury stays in your fifth house uh, and it's going to retrograde uh, July the 26th. So norm last time Mercury went through three houses. This time because of the retrograde, He's sticking around there in that fifth house. So is this good for you? This is not particularly good for you. Uh, no, uh, Mercury doesn't like being in the fifth house. It's not bad, but it's, um, yeah, Mercury's not, not thrilled. So, you know, dip in your energy, uh, issues communicating with your children, arguments could arise with colleagues, that kind of thing, not, not a great time to invest, for example. Uh, students may need to study harder than normal so so that's mercury there by the way anytime I mention where there's a planet that's compromised what you can do is you can click on the description below I'm going to link to my meditation series I've designed these meditations per planet and basically what they're designed to do is to recondition your subconscious mind and put in these kind of positive affirmations of the planet at its healthiest so that way, if a planet isn't going to deliver for you its best energy to you, you can use your free will to have that energy come through you, right? So the other things that you can do, you know, if say, for example, your sun isn't doing great, you could do some sun salutations um, or you could just spend time in the sun. You could just think about the sun and honor the sun. You know, if it's Venus, you could go shopping to a really fancy shop. You don't have to buy anything, but you, should, you could just kind of window shop and then like, you know, pretend to buy something or um, I've been doing a bit of that. I don't have any money to spend, so, <laughs> but I have been, uh, I'll, I'll hop on these websites and I kind of think, well, wouldn't it be nice one day to buy this or that? I'm sure that's giving my Venus a good workout. So let's have a look at your Venus now. Because um, I think we've done Mercury, haven't we? Mercury's not thrilled. I think we know that. Venus, July 4th, Venus is shifting from your fifth house to the sixth house. Venus is happy in your fifth house. Happiness, children, love, romance, all that good stuff. Venus, unfortunately, is debilitated in the sixth. Venus doesn't like being in the sixth house. Um, so be careful there uh, with your Venus energy. This this would be a good one to listen to some of the, the meditation uh, the Venus meditation would be a good one to listen to. Um, you could have a rise in expenses. Your work may not be great. It's not a great time to travel. Your Venus is definitely compromised. Let's take a look at your Jupiter and Saturn and see if there's uh, some good news here. No, not, not, not particularly. Um, okay, yeah. Nothing hugely good to report here on the, the Jupiter-Saturn front. Uh, Jupiter in the 8th is currently retrograde and is going forward July the 11th. Um, basically, you're going to have to work harder for your success at this time. It's not 
particularly an easy time career-wise potentially uh, you might have to spend more than usual your expenses might go up there might be some travel involved um, business issues be careful when it comes to litigation avoid arguments yeah okay so Saturn in the 10th we're just going to see what's happening with Saturn and yeah issues at work uh, differences with spouse burdens higher expenses health of the mother you want to look after absolutely so Pisces moon it's uh it's, apologies Pisces moon the camera seems to have just cut out I think I know why it's cutting out I think the camera's overheating it's really quite hot in London at the moment so I don't know it could be to do with that uh, I should Google search and figure it out. I would love to buy a new camera, but oh well, uh, that day will come. Anyway, I think I was just talking about your Saturn and I was saying, I was coming to the end of my rant about, you know, um, what's going on there and that the health of your mother might be compromised. And uh, yes, that, that could have implications over the next I mean, gosh, this Saturn transit is a bit long. Um, and it might not be health of your mother. It might be issues at work. It, it might be family-related matters. It might even be a property matter. Um, who knows? But the, but the, it's a mixed bag for you is what I'm saying. And one thing I can say is that when things get tough with Saturn, Saturn is trying to polish you. You're like a diamond in the rough and he just wants to polish you, polish you, polish you, and you will dazzle and shine brightly once these tough transits are done and you've definitely got some things to look forward to especially with Saturn when Saturn moves into the 11th house that's a great thing for you to look forward to yes that's 2020 but then that you know it's going to be a good long time where you'll be able to achieve a lot and earn a lot and do a lot so and before then you know these smaller transits you're going to have good stuff you know once you get through these trickier ones there's always the good so there's good news coming your way Pisces moon I promise you and um yeah and I just feel like I don't know I just feel like you're so spiritual and you're going to get through you're going to be absolutely fine you know Pisces moon people are just wonderfully deep and spiritual and um you've always got that You've always got that place of retreat, no matter what's going on. So that's really very special indeed. So I want to thank you, Pisces Moon. I want to thank you for stopping by. And tomorrow I'm going to be recording the big overview. And the big overview is going to contain Mars. It's going to contain Rahu and Ketu. I might include a little bit of Saturn there too, but from a collective point of view. So I want to thank you so much, Pisces Moon, for stopping by. And I really hope to see you next month. So thanks for stopping by.